Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunday morning worship here at Mount Tom Missionary Baptist Church, where our mission is to win souls to Christ, one person at a time, to nurture Christian growth through teaching, preaching, and fellowship, and to reach out to the community, our country, and the world through service after the benediction. We're located at 4923 Arthur Butler Road, Coldwater, Mississippi, which is just approximately 30 minutes south of Memphis, Tennessee, and neighbors to both DeSoto County, Mississippi, and Tunica County, Mississippi. We're under the leadership of Pastor Melvin Anderson. We're still in the midst of this pandemic and fighting this virus known as COVID-19. The light at the end of the tunnel may be starting to appear, but we are all still far from the end of this pandemic. To combat this virus and to keep our individual selves safe, we must continue to wear masks, keep a minimal distance of six feet from each other in public, and practice safe hygiene by thoroughly washing our hands for at least 30 seconds and or constantly using hand sanitizer. COVID-19 vaccinations are starting to become more available to some. In the state of Mississippi, as of February the 7th, those who are healthcare workers ages 65 or older, or 18 to 64 with underlying conditions may register to receive a free vaccine by visiting covidvaccine.umc.edu. For more information on if you qualify to receive the vaccine, please visit the Mississippi Department of Health website at msdh.ms.gov. For those who reside in Tennessee, the COVID vaccine is now available to healthcare workers, first responders, federal mortuary workers, and individuals 70 years of age and older. Shelby County residents can visit shelbytnhealth.com for more info. Also, please note that several national pharmacy chains such as Walmart, CVS, and Walgreens will be receiving the vaccine in the coming weeks. Check with your state health department first to see if one of these pharmacies in your local area have the fat name and if you meet those requirements. February is Black History Month in the United States. Throughout all of our services this month, we will showcase many of our Black idols highlighting gospel legends. Along with that, be sure to follow us on both Facebook and Instagram at Mount Tom Church as we post Black History facts every other day this month. Even though we are all still safely socially distancing during this time, we here at Mount Tom encourage you to connect with us, follow us, share us, like us, subscribe to us on all of our social media pages at Mount Tom Church. Visit us on our website at www.mountcomchurch.org. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button below where you can be alerted of new content from us. If you're on Facebook, hit the like, follow symbol above and share us with your friends. By doing so, you're doing your part by winning a soul to Christ. Even though we're currently not in the church house, we're still the church by engaging virtually. We encourage you to join us weekly for our prayer call on Wednesday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Central. Information to join this call is listed on the screen. Given this time, we are all in the need of prayer, whether we're suffering from sickness or death or any other ailment. This is the time for all of us to come together and pray together. Join us Sunday on Facebook, YouTube, and our website at 9.30 a.m. Central for our weekly Sunday School lesson brought to you by our Sunday School Department. And as always, our Sunday worship services here on Facebook, YouTube, and our website weekly at 10 a.m. on Sunday. I pray something is sung, read, or said today that uplifts you throughout your weekly journey. May a joyful noise resound the heavens and uplift you from our music ministry. And may the word brought to you by our pastor, Reverend Melvin Anderson, encourage you 
and leave you on a better note. May God continue to bless you and be safe. Now, join us in faith. Well, come on and give God a glorious praise. He has brought you through another Sunday this year of 2021. I don't know about you, but the month of January has been a little rough, but the promises of February are already here. And I come to let you know that because you live, that means there's more. If you have breath in your body, that means God has more for you. And I don't know about you, that puts running in my feet, clapping in my hands. Yeah. This is the day that the Lord has yeah. made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I don't care what the devil has thrown at you. This is the day that the Lord has made. I don't care what you're going through on your job, what you're going through on, at home. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I am happy to be Thank here on this morning. Yeah. I get joy when I enter into this kingdom. Yes, Lord. I'm going to read to you a passage of scripture. And it's going to set us up for this morning. Yes, Lord. I am coming from 100 Numbers of Song. Yes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, yes. and all that is within me. Yes. Bless his holy name. Yes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Yes. Amen. Praise God, somebody. Praise God. Praise God. I am so excited today. Yes, this morning, praise team is going to give you some down-home, foot-stomping gospel music. So yes. right where you are. Y'all put your hands together and help us praise the Lord on yeah. this morning. Yeah. Shoes on 
table. God is good. Said he put food on my table. God is good. You know he put food on my table. And he put shoes on my feet so he could guide my every footstep. Jesus for a moment of prayer. The Father, we come to the throne of grace telling you thank you, Father. Father, we come to the throne boldly, God. God, asking in your name, God, asking and believing that we will receive whatever we ask in your name, God, according to thy will, God. Let it be done, God. God, right now we ask you just to clean us up, God, before we ask for anything, God. Make us pure, God. Make us whole, God. God, if there's anything in us, God, that's not like you, God, search us and take it out, Father. God, please take it out, God. And God, make us more like you, God. Let your fruits grow in us, Lord, God. God, we 
don't want to walk in the flesh, God, but we want to walk in the spirit, God, the spirit of your love, of your peace, of your patience, Lord God. God, we want to walk in your spirit, God. God, right now, I ask you, God, just to lead us and guide us, God, God. God, we can't go without you, God. We don't know which way to go, God, if you don't lead us and guide us. God, we thank you for all that you've done up to this point, God. We thank you for covering us, Lord God. Because of your grace and your mercy, God, we're still here. And we say thank you, Father. God, we don't take it for granted that we get up in the morning. We don't take it for granted that we put clothes on our bodies, Lord God. God, we don't take it for granted that we, got, we can pick and choose what we want to eat, God. Somebody can't do that, but God, we tell you thank you right now, Father. Father, we tell you thank you that we can get in the car and go where we want to go. And right now, Father, we just say thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, God. God, somebody is going on home, God, but God, you let us be here, Lord God. You let our families be here, God. And we say thank you for it, God. God, we say thank you for it, Lord God. For the little things, God, we tell you thank you, God. A place to go when we leave here, God. We say thank you for it, God. God, we say thank you most of all, God. We thank you for dying for us, God. We can't forget how you shed your blood for us, God. And we say thank you for it, God. And now we got somewhere to go when we leave here, God. And we say thank you, Father. Father, I ask you just to bless the sick and the shut in all around us, Lord God. God, people are in the hospitals, Lord God. I seem like there's no hope, but God, God, we know we can have hope in you, Jesus. God, we standing on your word and what your word says, Lord God, that you will never leave us and you'll never forsake sake us. And God, we said, thank you. We trusted in you. We're not trusting in our money and our jobs, God, but we trusted in you, Father. We trust in what your word says, Father. We trust in your word, Father. We tell you, thank you, Father. Father, we tell you, thank you, Father. Father, I ask you just to bless every church, God. I know it's kind of hard right now, but God, we can praise you anywhere, Lord God. We don't have to be confined to the four walls, God. We can praise you in our kitchen. Every time we think of the goodness of Jesus, we can say thank you. We can give you a praise, God. We tell you thank you. We tell you thank you, Father. Father, we tell you thank you, God. God, bless every pastor, Lord God. Bless our pastor, God, as he give us the word on this morning, God. God, let us receive what he has to say. God, lead us and guide us and protect us. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that I pray. Thank God and amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. As we all know, this is Black History Month in America. Yes. And the next song that our praise team brings to you is a song for our black people. Mm -hmm. Lift every voice and sing. Originally written in 1899 by James Weldon Johnson and arranged to music by brother John Rosemond Johnson. It was originally set to commemorate the birthday of Abraham Lincoln in 1900. But in 1919, NAACP set this song to be our national anthem. Mm -hmm. A national anthem that was different from the Star Spangled Banner. This song here uplifts us and encourages us. Mm -hmm. It's a history lesson, a rallying cry, and a pledge of unity in one. As the praise team sing this song today, this song here will commemorate the living and the past of our civil rights leaders who have shared their life to make black America better for us. Give it up for our praise team.
the moral universe is long, but it bends towards the yes, sir. How long? Not, Not long. Not long. Because my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Yes, He's trampling out the city yes, where the great the wrath of the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes. He's loosed the fateful lightning yes, of his terrible swift sword. Yes, sir. His truth is marching on. Yes, sir. He has sounded yes, forth the trumpet. That shall never call retreat. Lisa, he is tipping out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, stand for him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. independence of people of African descent here in the Western Hemisphere and first here in the United States and bring about the freedom of these people by any means necessary. I met Rosa Parks at the age of 17. In 1958, at the age of 18, I met Martin Luther King Jr. and these two individuals inspired me to get in the way, to get in trouble. So I come here to say to you this morning, on this beautiful campus, with your great education, you must find a way to get in the way. You must find a way to get in trouble, the trouble, necessary trouble. My philosophy is very simple. When you see something that is not right, not fair, not just you have a moral obligation to say something, to do something. Stand up, speak up. Speak. America, we have come so far. We have seen so much, but there's so much more to do. So tonight, let us ask ourselves, if our children should live to see the next century, if my daughters should be so lucky to live as long as Ann Nixon could, what change will they see? What progress will we have made? This is our chance to answer that call. This is our moment. This is our time to put our people back to work, open doors of opportunity for our kids, to restore prosperity and promote the cause of peace, to reclaim the American dream and reaffirm that fundamental truth that out of many we are one, that while we breathe, we hope, and where we are met with cynicism and doubt and those who tell us that we can't, we will respond with that timeless creed that sums up the spirit of a people. Yes, we can. Thank you. God bless you. And may God bless the United States of America. And to the American people, no matter who you vote for, I will strive to be a vice president like Joe was to President Obama. Loyal, honest, and prepared, waking up every day thinking of you and your family. Because now is when the real work begins. The hard work, the necessary work, the good work, the essential work to save lives and beat this epidemic, to rebuild our economy, so it works for working people to root out systemic racism in our justice system and society, to combat the climate crisis, to unite our country and heal the soul of our nation. And the road ahead will not be easy, but America is ready. And so are Joe and I. church now. Come on, y'all ready to have a little church now? Come on, God is good. Come on, y'all ready to have a little church now? Hallelujah. You can't tell it, why don't 
giving praises to God who indeed is the head of my life. To all of you that are listening to us, all of you that are here, we thank you all so much. Um, let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we thank you for all that you've done for us, Father. We thank you for what you're getting ready to do in our lives. We also thank you for what you didn't allow to come into our lives, Father. Thank you again for uh, giving us the strength to go on. Even in the midst of all these troubling times, Father God, you were able to be there with us and hold our hands and guide us. Father, right now we pray for all the all the veterans we have. We pray for all the ones that have died through COVID-19. Father God, we thank you uh, for the family members that are still encouraged, uh, letting them know that there's still hope, letting them know that, Father God, you are a God that can do anything uh, exceedingly, abundantly, and above all things. So we trust in you right now to do everything that we need, Father. I'm, we're asking you to touch the ones. We're asking you right now, Father God, to see what everybody's needs are. Meet them at their needs, Father. Exceed their needs for them today. We thank you for all that you've done. Father, Father, we ask you to let your word be able to encourage someone today, not disencourage anyone. Let your word be able to teach someone today. Let your word be able to reach that person's heart that needs you most, Father. These are the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I know we started the new year off with a theme of a fresh start. I'm just a believer that in order to get a fresh start, uh, you can't do the same things you've been doing. So in other words, in order to get a fresh start or a new start, uh, how many believe that some things has got to change? Amen. Um, we go to 2 Kings chapter 18. 2 Kings chapter 18 be verses 1 through 7. 2 Kings chapter 18, verses 1 through 7. Uh, for the sake of time, y'all don't have to stand. For the sake of time, we're not going to read these scriptures. Uh, at your own time, please be able to read uh, 2 Kings chapter 18, verses 1 through 7. 2 Kings chapter 18. Verses 1 through 7. Hey Amen. This message today, I want to title it, Something Has to Change. Look over at somebody. If you're near somebody, if you can, tell them something has got to change. Hey Amen. The new normal makes something have to change. Y'all know the preaching in Amen. It goes together. For God has joined that no man put asunder. Something has got to change. This message today is a message of direction. I know we're normally focused on evangelistic, but we're going to focus today on a message of direction. This is not only to the Mount Com Church. This is to the church at large, to everybody that's listening to us today. Uh, Hezekiah in our text, I'm going to get right to our text. Hezekiah in our text is one of the kings of Judah. And at the time when the tribe was divided and he was a king of Judah, uh, even though his father was one of the worst kings, he was one of the best kings. I think that is important for our young people to help them understand uh, because your parents may not do the right thing, but you can always choose to do the right thing. L let me say it again. Even though your parents may not choose to do the right thing, you as a young person should always choose or have the opportunity to do the right thing. Like I said the other day, uh, the, the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, one of his quotes, he said, the time is always right to do the right thing. Um, so he closed, so he, he chose or he chose to do the right thing. The Bible, in fact, describes some of the interesting traits 
about Hezekiah. If you don't believe me, look at verse 5. Verse 5 tells us that it said he trusted in the Lord of Israel so that after him was none like him among the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. Verse 7 says, and the Lord was with him, and he proposed or he pr prospered with, with him. He went forward, and he rebellious against the king of Assyria and served him not. Verse 8 says that he smote the Philistines and defeated the enemies of Israel. Here's a man, Hezekiah. Here's a man who had God's favor upon his life. But Hezekiah was an agent of change. God used Hezekiah to bring about a change that was very much well needed. Change is not always easy. I understand people don't want to change. In fact, change is very difficult for most people. We don't like to change. What we, we're, we're, we're happy with what we're doing on a daily basis, so we stick to how we've been doing things. But my discussion with you today is to let you know that there is time, there is a time and there is a season for everything, and I believe at this time and in this season, we are getting ready for a change. Look at somebody and tell them something has to change. As a matter of fact, we, we are people of habits and of norms. Uh, we like to wear, what are you saying? We like to wear the same set of clothes. We, I know we got a closet full of clothes, but we just like to wear the same set of clothes. Uh, we wear the same blouse with the same skirt. We wear the same dress with the same jewelry. We wear the same tie set with the same suit. We wear the same thing. We wear the same sweatpants with our favorite T-shirt. We go and do Taco Tuesdays. We do the same thing week after week, day after day. We got to have our coffee at the same time of the day. We got to take our showers the same time of the day. We get up and go to work the same time of the day. Believe it or not, we go to lunch the same time of the day. It is what it is. We are people that are accustomed to habits. But it's time for a change. Hezekiah was an agent. Of change. Listen, COVID-19 is an agent of change. It's, what, what do you mean? It's bringing change or has brought change to our nation, our world, our community, even our own homes. COVID-19 is an agent of change. Our country is going through a drastic or going through drastic changes. And I believe that if we are going to change, then we have to be flexible. I want to thank Mount Com for being flexible because every time you get a new pastor at any church, you're going to go through some changes. So I, I'm glad to know that they are very flexible. They're big, you have to be willing to do some bending. If you're going to change, you got to be willing to do some bending. You got to walk down different paths and you got to be able to sit in different seats. I understand you're so comfortable sitting in the same place every time you go to the same place, but we got to learn how to operate in different ways. Matter of fact, the Bible is full of people who made changes. You don't believe me? Look at Elijah. Elijah was, was at a time when there was a famine in the land and he found himself changing where he lived. He moved from one location to another location. When the brook dried up, God told him to go to Zarephath. And there was a woman there that was going to feed him. He made a change. He would have died if he hadn't made that change and stayed where he was. So that's my word for somebody that's listening to us today, that you will die in your situation if you do not change. Uh, y'all don't believe me? Keep on reading. Zacchaeus, y'all, Zacchaeus, y'all remember him in Luke chapter, seven, chapter 19. Uh, he was a young tax collector who found himself interested in Jesus. 
the crowd was so large so he couldn't see him. He couldn't get to him. So he had to change his posture. He changed his posture and he went up what we call or what they call the sycamore tree uh, to see Jesus. And when he changed his perspective and climbed up the tree, not only did he see Jesus, but Jesus saw him. Y'all don't hear me talking. So when you change your perspective, God will see you and he'll bring change into your life. Uh, you have to be willing. I know y'all waiting on me to do all this running and jumping, but guess what? We're going to talk to you today because I believe that if we can get past the running and jumping and hooping and hollering, maybe somebody would let's learn something. So we have to change our perspective so God can see us and he can change us. You have to be willing to change. Zacchaeus was willing to change, and Jesus went. To his house. I didn't make it up. And even through, or even though Jesus got criticized by the religious community, y'all listen very well, because anytime you decide to change, you will be criticized by the religious community when you make a change. Jesus got, or Jesus went to his house that day and brought salvation. But it requires a change. Even Hezekiah, we get into our text, even even Hezekiah made some drastic changes. Uh, Look at verse 3. I didn't make it up. Verse 3, it tells us that, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. Now, now I'm concerned, and I recognize that our country today and all over the world, and yes, even churches, are in a season of change. Uh, when we come back to church, it can't be as the usual. We will have to make some changes. What, what it, well, hold on, Pastor. Which, what, it, what are you trying to say? We can't do any changes. Well, with this stuff that's going on, we can't gather around the altar and do altar call. We can't do long services because we'll be in one place all together for such, such long period of time. Offering would need to change as well. Maybe that's a good thing that offering need to change. So that way, when folks walk around, you don't see who's putting money in the bucket and who don't have money to put in the bucket because we watch those things. So it's a good thing for you to drop your ties and offering off when you're on your way in the door so nobody can see what you are doing. Some changes are good. So that's why I say it's time for a change. Hold on. What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? We don't need all these changes. I don't think we need to do that. But guess what? Long time ago, the choir used to march. Y'all remember that? The choir used to march in. We don't march in anymore. We used to sing old Negro spirituals, but we don't do those anymore. Hold on. Wait a minute. When you had a, before you was even born, they didn't even have a cell phone. They didn't have a cell phone when I was born. Even after I was born, they didn't have a cell phone. But let's, you change from not having a phone. Now you got a flip phone. Then you move from a flip phone. Now you got a smartphone. Hold on. Wait a minute. You went from not having a TV. Then you went from a black and white tube TV. Now you went from a flat screen smart TV. Hold on. Wait a minute. You went from walking with no shoes on. Now you put on shoes. Then you went from a mule in a wagon. Then you went to a station wagon. And now you're driving Mercedes and BMW. So you welcome to so why the church can't change? Uh, we need to change. Listen, uh, 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 let me give you three things. We're going to leave. Uh, if you're going to change, change, number one, is going to require courage. Change is going to require courage. Uh, look at verse 4. It says, he Remove the high places and break the images and cut down the groves 
and break the pieces of the brazen or the brassen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those the children of Israel did burn incense to it and called it Nehustin. This man made some drastic changes. If you're going to make a change in your life, it is going to require courage. God needs some God-fearing people to be agents of change. Hezekiah, he tore all this stuff down, and the scripture said that what he did was right. They told us what he did before he did it. They told us whatever he did was right. It's amazing. In verse number four, it says that he broke the brazen serpent in pieces. He broke it in pieces. That is something that Moses had made. Moses is the one, wait a minute, Moses is the one that brought them out of bondage. So now they're saying he broke in pieces this brass serpent that Moses had made. Oh, uh, wait a minute. And the brass serpents was made when the children of Israel were rebellious. So somebody want to know about this brass serpent. I'm glad I'm going to educate you real quick. Uh, go ahead and put the pens and, and paper together. Listen, when the children of Israel were being rebellious, Moses made the brass serpent. Why did he make the brass serpent? Because when they were being rebellious, God sent the serpents to bite the people and die. And Moses went to God and cried and said, Lord, have mercy on us. So God told Moses to create the brass serpent and hang it up on a pole so that anyone that get bitten by a serpent, they are to look at this brass serpent and they will be healed. Now, here they are. Researchers say that this is thousands of years after Moses has died. So here they are decades of years later, still burning incense, still bowing down to this brass serpent. Nobody is being healed. Nobody is being healed anymore. Its purpose has long passed. Y'all got to stay with me because if not, you're going to miss what I'm trying to say. Its purpose has long passed. Uh, just, just for a moment, God had Moses to create the brass serpent for a specific season and time. Uh, and now that they have been elevated to a spot beyond where God intended for them to be elevated, and now they are still bowing down, still burning incense to it. And Hezekiah had courage enough to break it into pieces. He tore it down. What, what are you trying to say? All I'm trying to say, tradition is going to mess up a whole lot of folks. We constantly doing the same things, and we ain't getting nowhere. So some of the stuff we're doing was only good for that time. So now that times have changed, we have to change. Whatever we used to do hadn't got folks saved. Whatever we used to do didn't get folks to say, I believe in Jesus. So what are we doing now? We got to change in order to grab more people people and win more souls to Christ. Uh, so, so in other words, what are you saying? What is your brass serpents that you have in your life? Some of us worship things that only make our lives worse than what they already are. Uh, I, I don't want to dig on what those are because somebody may say I'm studying your habit. So I'm going to move on. Listen, your brass serpents are keeping you from being all that God wants you or need you to be. You have to make a change. You got to have courage if you're going to make a change. If you want to see something different in your life, you want to see doors open in your life, you have to make a change. That's my challenge to every church, not just this church, to every church in the world. We have to make changes. What churches 
have been doing the last 50, 60, 70, 100 years. It's not what we do. It's how we do it. So what we've been doing lately is not helping nobody win anything. Everybody is still dying all over the world. People are still stressed out. People are still without. So whatever we're doing right now is not enough. We have to change our perspective and we have to have courage when we do it. We have to reach other people. We have to reach our people. We have to impact our communities because people need help all over. Uh, uh, someone said to me a while back, you know how back in the old days, I told y'all, you welcome certain changes, but you don't welcome all changes. We well, you know back in, the, back in the older days, you know, they, we didn't have all this technology. Stay right there, I'm gonna come get you. We didn't have all this technology, but we want to have church the way we've been having church. Well, guess what? You can't come in the church right now. So how are you going to see the church? So now you want technology in your church. Because without technology, you couldn't see the church. So we got to be able to set ourselves aside and have technology because without technology, we wouldn't be able to be able to be online so you can see what we're doing in the church. You won't be able to hear what the word of God is. Why you say we can't hear the word of God? Because we know when we tell you to go home and read chapter 3 of Isaiah or read chapter 3 of Mark, you ain't going to pick it up because you're going to be too busy picking up the remote control and whatever book you're trying to read or whatever time series you're trying to finish on Netflix and not pick up the Bible until Sunday morning. Oh, wait a minute. We're not in service. So when do you pick up the Bible? Uh, listen, number two, and I'm moving. Uh, make sure, again, we got to be able to reach out, not only to our own community, but to everyone. Listen, number two, and I'm moving. We got to be able to trust God. We got to be able to trust God. I heard somebody say that earlier. We got to trust God. Look at verse 5. Verse 5, and I'm almost done. Listen, he trusted in the Lord of Israel so that after him was none like him among the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. So he was the best king that Judah ever had. There was nobody like him before him or nobody like him after him. Why was Nobody before him like him, and why was nobody after him like him? That says to me, if you read the scripture, the scripture tells us in verse 3. Verse 3 says, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. So what are you saying? All the kings prior and all the kings after didn't do nothing that was right in the sight of of the Lord. Be careful who you allow your king to be. Uh, so your mind is going to tell you no. Like I say, you got to trust in God. Your mind is going to tell you no. Your mind is going to tell you you can't do it. Some of your friends are going to tell you you can't do it. But you have to trust in God. It may not look too clear. The end may look like a dead end, but you got to be able to trust God, I know it seems blurry. I know your vision may not look that well, but we got to be able to trust God. Listen, this is my last point, and I'm done. I'm sitting down. Uh, thank y'all so much for listening today. Thank you all so much. Uh, this is my last point. Uh, Brother Carlos, you can give me some melody music, some something, something soft. I'm going to give my last point, and then I'm going to pray. We're going to get out of here. Listen, verse 3, uh, this, my third point is listen. If you look at verse 6, verse 6 says, For he claimed to the Lord and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. Said he departed not from him. So in other words, he walked with the Lord. So my point three is close. You got to have a closer walk with God. A closer walk. If you're going to change, you got to have courage. You got to trust God. 
And you got to walk with God. Walk close with God. Stick with him no matter what is going on. He will be your defender. He will work things out for your good. Whatever it is, walk with God. God will be there for you. God will do what no man can do. He'll be your friend when you're friendless. He'll be your mother when you're motherless. He'll be your father when you're fatherless. He'll be your bridge over troubled waters. He'll be bread when you're hungry. He'll be water when you're thirsty. He'll be shelter in a time of storm. I don't know anybody that can be all of that. They're either this or that, but they're not all that and a bag of chips. Jesus will be everything that you ever need. Make what I'm trying to say is listen, somebody listening to us today, maybe you need to change who your God is. Maybe you need to serve the God that we serve. Because as for being my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And the only way, some people think it's more than one way to get to heaven. The text says, there's only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So you don't need to believe and trust in any other God but the God that we serve. I challenge those today that do not have a better relationship with God to change your habits, to get closer to God. You got things going on in your life. And you never know how they're going to end. If you turn it over to God, he'll help you in whatever tragedies you're living in. Because we serve all these other gods, and they've gotten us nowhere. All these other gods, them died. But the God we serve, the Jesus we've served, said he died one day. But I think the Lord because after he died the Bible said he didn't stay buried uh, about three days later the text says early Sunday morning early on the third day he got up with all power in his hands so I, I don't know about you I don't know what God you serve. I don't know what Lord you serve. But the God I serve had power to get up. He had power. He said, oh, death, where is thy sting? So I'm glad that I serve a God that sits high and he looks low. I serve a God that does not mind carrying me wherever I need to go. I'm glad that I serve a God that's going to be there for me when I don't have anybody else. I thank God for sending his son, Jesus. Again, I challenge everybody to get rid of whatever is blocking you and get a better relationship with God. I challenge everyone to get closer to God, especially at a time like this. Indeed, it is time for a change. Let's bow his Father God in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you've done, Father God. We thank you for what you're getting ready to do in our lives. Father God, bless the families that need you most, Father God. Meet them at their needs. Uh, Father, we have too many people that are, that are sick in our world and they don't have hope, Father God. Let them know that by your stripes that they are healed. And we got to claim it in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus said every prayer that we pray, if we have the right mind, we're, we, we, we're, we're satisfied with Jesus. And if we, we have faith that he's going to be able to do it. Jesus said, if we say every prayer, if we say it in, in his name, then it shall come to pass. So long as it's in God's will, we got to say, look, it's in the name of Jesus that we need this done. In the name of Jesus, we need healing to be done. In the name of Jesus, we need sickness to get out of here. In the name of Jesus, 
We need COVID-19 to get out of here. In the name of Jesus, folks need houses to live in. In the name of Jesus, they need shelter. They need cars. They need their mind regulated. They need to have peace within their homes. Father God, they need peace at their jobs. In the name of Jesus, we need you today to be better than you've ever been before. Because, Father God, if there's never been a time that we need you, we need you right now. Father, as we dismiss ourselves from this place, never from thy presence. These and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen, amen, amen. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you. May God bless. so much for watching our service today. We hope and pray something was said and done to uplift you on this daily journey. We are located at 4923 Arthur Butler Road in Coldwater, Mississippi, just 30 minutes south of Memphis, Tennessee, and neighbors to DeSoto County in Tunica, Mississippi. Let's stay connected. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and subscribe to us on YouTube at Mount Com Church. Visit us at www mountcomchurch.org If you would like to sow a seed to this ministry, you could do so by mailing us at P.O. Box 376 Coldwater, Mississippi 38618 or sending money electronically via cash app to dollar sign Mount Calm Church. Service times at Mount Calm are as follows during this COVID-19 pandemic. Every first Sunday monthly, you have the option to worship with us in person at 10 a.m. All of our services are available online, live, every Sunday at 10 a.m. on YouTube, Facebook, and our website. At Mount Calm Church, we're dedicated to service after the benediction and winning souls to Christ. going back to be a fool because things that I used to do is not going to allow me to get encouraged on what I'm trying to do right now. So you got to encourage yourself like Sherman Clump and said, yes, I can. But when you plant a seed so that it can go through a transformation to come back up looking better than what it was before it went down because if we seek God and his kingdom and his righteousness then everything we act for will be added.